Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan has won another term in office after snap parliamentary elections. Official results show his party has won over 50 percent of the vote. Pashinyan called the poll to shore up his mandate after disastrous war with Azerbaijan last year. Last year's ceasefire saw Armenia lose large swaths of territory in the long-disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region. The election result could impact the future of the agreement with Azerbaijan. The results came in steadily after the polls closed. One figure was available quickly, turnout. Despite an emotionally charged campaign, only half the eligible voters cast their ballot. Incumbent Nicole Pishinyan appeared on Facebook shortly after counting started to claim victory. We already know that we won a convincing victory in the elections and we will have a convincing majority in parliament. Pashinyan called the election in a bid to stabilize his government. Armenia is still smarting from its defeat to Azerbaijan in the war over the disputed enclave of Nagorno-Karabakh. A peace treaty brokered by Russia in November sealed the loss of vast swathes of territory. And that after thousands of Armenian soldiers had died in the fighting. The lost war kicked off a wave of protests, with demonstrators even storming the parliament in Yerevan. I want to be able to get up in the mornings and go out for my exercise without finding a demonstration outside on the streets. The last three years have been awful. Our economy, our politics, it's all gone totally wrong. Former President Robert Kacharyan is heading for second place in the polls, far behind Pashinyan's party. He's already cried foul over the result, claiming fraud. But that's unlikely to concern Pashinyan, who won international praise for leading the country to its first free and fair elections three years ago and looks set to emerge victorious once more. DW correspondent Nick Connolly is in the Armenian capital Yerevan. Nick, it looks like with almost all the votes counted, it looks certainly like a convincing win for the incumbent Nikol Pashinyan, despite polls that showed that he was running neck and neck with his opposition. So how did this happen? Well, this was definitely a bad evening, a bad election for the pollsters, for the pundits. Um, I think you have to remember that, especially in smaller countries where there aren't the financial resources for lots of extensive polling, and polling, good polling is expensive, that kind of polling is normally uh, paid for by one of the political parties that has an interest in uh, portraying a certain tendency in voters' intentions. Certainly, though, it was very difficult to see this coming. We spoke to lots of voters yesterday at the polls. Very little open enthusiasm for Pashinyan. I think maybe there was a, a certain unwillingness to kind of come out with their support for Pashinyan after this disastrous defeat in war to Azerbaijan, but still maybe a grudging recognition that he was the best um, alternative, the best option on the ballot. So very difficult to tell, but then a surprisingly uh, convincing victory for the incumbent after lots of uh, months of pretty stormy politics here in Armenia. How's the opposition taking this? Well, <laughs> not well is the short answer. Um, they've already said that they um, are going to... Um, appeal lots of different um, results from various polling stations across the country. Um, so far, they haven't brought any examples that would really change this result significantly. They talk about um, pressure from the government on various um, members of their political party. They've talked about illegal um, in electioneering and kind of uh, propaganda by government party or the ruling party officials in the days leading up to this election. Um, whether or not they're actually going to accept these results is still unclear. Both parties, both the front-running parties, had said that they would hold rallies today, bring out the supporters on the streets of Yerevan. So there could still be um, some ugly scenes today if it turns out that the two front-runners are going to bring out their people onto the, their supporters on the streets of Yerevan and uh, try and kind of uh, seal this election with uh, feet on the ground. Mm. If Pashinyan does in fact come out of this with a renewed mandate, where does Armenia go from here, especially given the fact that tensions are still running very high with neighboring Azerbaijan? 
Well, exactly. Even if the internal situation calms down and the opposition and their supporters recognise this result, Nicole Pashinyan is really going to have his work cut out for him. We were up in the mountains on the border with Azerbaijan just a few days ago where the border is being demarcated. Basically, you have 20-year-old conscripts up in the mountains at 3,000 metres, standing off 15 metres from the Azeris. Um, there have been shots fired, there have been soldiers kidnapped. There's lots of potential there for escalation to continue. Uh, and you know, for lots of people here, they, they think this ceasefire is merely a pause uh, to this conflict that's been going on essentially for th three decades rather than any kind of resolution. And then Nikol Pashinyan will have to deal also with Russia. Vladimir Putin is this country's most important ally, but he had backed implicitly the opposition's candidate Robert Kachirian. So there's going to be a lot of uh, diplomatic patching up to do there and uh, a very tough uh, set of challenges for this new government to resolve here in Armenia. Mm. DW's uh, Nick Connolly in Yerevan for us. Many, many thanks, Nick.